joining me now is one of the lead plaintiffs on the Texas abortion ban lawsuit, Amanda Zarowski. Amanda, thank you very much. I'm so sorry for everything you've had to go through. Um, just explain, explain what it took for you, how far you needed to get before you got that medically necessary intervention. Sure. Um, hi, Katie. Thank you for having me, first and foremost. Um, so, yeah, what happened to me was I found out on a Tuesday that I was going to lose my baby and a miscarriage was inevitable. Um, at that point, what should have happened was my doctor should have been able to intervene right away and perform an abortion so that um, I didn't get sick. But because of the laws that had just um, been passed in Texas, unfortunately, she was not allowed to uh, provide health care because the baby's heart was still beating and I wasn't considered sick. Um, my life wasn't considered in danger. And so until either the baby's heart stopped beating or I became sick enough that my life was considered in danger, we just had to wait. And so it took three days for me to reach the point where my life was considered in danger. Um, and what happened to me was in a, ma a matter of about 15 minutes, I went from you know seemingly healthy to septic. And um, what that looked like for me was an extremely high fever. I think it spiked at 103 um, incoherent confusion. I couldn't walk from the car to our bedroom without my husband's help, um, violently shaking, teeth chattering. Um, you know, it, it felt like if you've ever had the worst flu, the worst chills of your life, that times about a thousand. I mean, it was the worst I've ever felt in my life. And just explain why the doctor said, I mean, clearly you got sick very quickly, but why did the doctor say that your baby would not survive? What was wrong with her? Nothing was wrong with her, unfortunately. Um, it was my body that was failing. So I had a condition called incompetent cervix or cervical insufficiency, which basically means that my cervix was dilating um, far too early. So obviously at the 18 week mark, a, a, a baby can't survive um, outside of the womb. And with my cervix dilating, I lost all of my amniotic fluid. Um, and we also know that, you know, a baby can't survive in the mother's womb without the amniotic fluid. Um, so unfortunately, she didn't stand a chance. Your water broke. Um, that's how you lost all that amniotic fluid. And even when your water broke, you were told that they can't help you yet, even after your water broke? Yeah, so we actually went back and forth to the hospital, I think three times um, in in that three days of waiting because we kept thinking, okay, certainly this is a sign, certainly I've progressed enough that they can provide health care, but we kept being turned away um, for, for access because again, her heart was still beating and my life wasn't at risk. What did the doctors say to you when they denied this? Oh my gosh, they were anguished. Um, so you can imagine going back and forth several times, we saw several, uh, obviously my own OB, but also several um, specialists, several attendings, um, a number of residents, lots of techs, nurses, all, all kinds of healthcare professionals, and every single one of them was just gutted. I mean, they told us time and again how sorry they were, how they wanted to be able to help, and they just couldn't. They felt their hands were tied. Um, you had to go through uh, over a year of fertility treatments to get pregnant in the first place. How able are you to get pregnant now? Are you fully recovered? We don't know. Um, physically, from the sepsis that I developed, yes, I am fully recovered. Um, as far as what's going on with me internally, reproductively, um, it took a number of surgeries, lots of imaging, lots of tests. Um, we know that it was already difficult for me to get pregnant once, and it will medically be even more difficult for me to get pregnant again. Um, so my fertility specialist has actually recommended that we go straight to IVF um, and I'll share with you, we have 
attempted IVF and and so far have been unsuccessful. Oh God, I'm so sorry. And, and I hate getting into all the details, but I think they're important. You were left with scar tissue in one of in your fallopian tubes. One of one of them couldn't be uh, opened back up. Is that correct? Right. So my uterus actually had so much scar tissue in it um, that when they tried to take images of it, it was so dense that they couldn't even visualize any of my anatomical structures because there was so much scar tissue. So they had to go in and surgically clear all of that out, which they successfully were able to do that. Um, but unfortunately, one of my fallopian tubes is permanently closed because of the scar tissue that they were unable to remove. Does not make it easier to get pregnant. Amanda, just finally, you're bringing a lawsuit, not against the doctors, but against the state of Texas. What do you want out of it? Well, in the complaint, as, as you mentioned, we are hoping that a court will more clearly define when a woman can receive an abortion and when it's a medical necessity. Um, for me personally, it started as education because I think a lot of people in this country didn't understand what these restrictive laws truly meant and the full reach and impact that they were going to have and are having. Um, I think we've already made some waves there, which is good. So now we're really hoping that, you know, there will be other folks like me, not that there will be other folks like me, but other people who have been through something similar that perhaps seeing what we're doing will give them the courage to speak up and do something similar because it's hard to be the very first one to do it. Yeah. Um, but we're hoping that we can give a voice and maybe some some courage to, to others. And just to be clear, what happened to you was avoidable if you got the health care you needed when they said you needed it. Yes, exactly.